In this video, I'll discuss chemical formulas and then go on to talk about the difference between a molecular formula and an empirical formula. We're asked to find the ratio of the atoms in the following molecular formulas and then give the empirical formulas. So all of these examples are given in the molecular formula. So that's what's given to us is the molecular formulas. And what these molecular formulas mean is that we have specifically two hydrogen, the subscript after the letter, tell you how many atoms you have of that uh, specific element. So we have two hydrogen atoms in this in this molecule grouped with two oxygen atoms. Okay, so that, that tells you the exact number of, of uh, atoms per molecule. That's what the molecular formula gives you. If we are asked to give the ratio then, the ratio of, of these of these atoms is is really just like simplifying a fraction. So 2 over 2 equals 1 over 1. So we have one hydrogen atom to one oxygen atom. And that's the ratio, 1 to 1. And the empirical formula then, now let's write the empirical formula always with this purple color. The empirical formula is is just that that basic ratio. So it's just HO. So that is the answer in uh, for part A of this question. Let's go on to part B. Again, uh, this is telling us that we have two nitrogen for every, or two every four oxygen. So two nitrogen for every four oxygen. And I, I like to think of it as simplifying fractions. Of course, a, a chemist wouldn't say we're simplifying fractions here, but but it's it's easy uh, to think of it because we we are already have that experience of, of dealing with fractions. And so when we deal with something new like a molecular formula, it's nice to relate it to something that we do know, and and that's just some fractions. So two to four, if we were to simplify that fraction, then we would have this fraction one to two. So one nitrogen to f two oxygen atoms, and that's that's our ratio, one nitrogen to two oxygen. So then the empirical formula, written in purple again, would be NO2. That's the empirical formula. Now, before I go on any further, let me just explain that usually you will see the, the formulas in molecular formulas, not empirical formulas. But it is worth knowing and seeing the empirical formula. Okay, aluminum hydroxide. The parentheses there mean that we have three of the OH, the hydroxide is what that is, grouped together. So you have one aluminum and then you have this is uh, going back to math this is like a three oxygen and three hydrogen it's like you're distributing that three so you could say you could say three OH or you could say you have three oxygen and you have three hydrogen because that's that's really saying the same thing as saying three OH so you have one to three to three so now you you can divide through by by the greatest common factor, if you will, the the highest number that will divide into all of these, each of these numbers evenly, into one, three, and three. Well, it's just one. So the ratio is going to stay the same. We're going to have this same ratio of one aluminum to three oxygen to three hydrogen. And so, therefore, the empirical formula would be the same. And that's it written in purple. That's still just aluminum, Al, and then O3, H3. Or, of course, we're going to use the parentheses, Al, and then OH, subscript 3. 
Okay, C sub 6, H sub 6. Well, again, we're just simplifying fractions, so I'll go, go through these last two a little bit faster. We've got six carbon atoms for every six hydrogen atoms. So the ratio of those is one to one, one carbon to every one hydrogen. And so the empirical formula is just CH. And lastly, N2O5. That is two nitrogen to every five oxygen, the way the, the molecular formula is written, N2O5. And simplifying that fraction, well, we can't simplify it anymore. It stays the same. So we just have N2O5. The, it turns out that that empirical formula is exactly the same as the molecular formula, because you can think of it as this fraction could not reduce or could not simplify this fraction anymore. So that's a little bit of a difference between the molecular formulas and the empirical formulas. I hope that helped you out. If you did find this video helpful, consider liking it or sharing it with a friend.